This episode of the Intelligence Preparation of the Battlefield focuses on Step 2, Describe Environmental Effects on Operations. The doctrinal proponent for IPB Step 2 is Army Techniques Publication, ATP 2-01.3, Chapter 4. Step 2 of IPB determines characteristics of the OE that can affect friendly and threat operations. Analysis focuses on existing and projected conditions in the AO and AOI. This step is terrain and weather focused against current, templated threat forces, friendly positions, and avenues of approach between the two forces. Through application of the framework, OACOC, analysis method on terrain. This is also probably the most time intensive portion of IPB for the intelligence staff due to the volume of data points available for terrain analysis. Collaborative efforts and support from fellow staff in conducting whole of staff or reverse IPB is instrumental in this step. Production within the step provides baseline assumptions for the rest of the staff to initiate detailed planning and begins an initial shared understanding of the AO. One of the first overlays of the threat is generated in step two with the threat overlay, identifying current known and templated threat positions in the AO. It should identify names of units, expected strength, locations of varying units or types of threats with supporting range rings of primary weapon systems. A second supporting product known as the threat description table accompanies this overlay and resembles an Excel-like document that identifies the type of unit, its location using military grid reference system, and if at all possible or at a minimum, the location of a key terrain feature or town of that item or that key weapon system. Provide a general description of activities with TTPs and additional information like strength and composition. Next, the process focuses on terrain analysis with emphasis on military aspects of terrain, or OVCOC, and attempt to determine their effects on both friendly and threat operations. Staff collaboration is again key for warfighting input based on the staff's experience and knowledge of the AO or threat capabilities. Separate products are created to understand mobility corridors, key terrain, horizontal and vertical line of sight, and products depending on the requirements of your unit. For example, airborne or air assault units will also conduct terrain analysis for suitable drop zones, landing zones, or field landing strip locations within an AO. If your threat has similar capabilities, I'd recommend that you conduct that same type of analysis for future COA threat analysis. The combination of all of the separate terrain analysis products into a single presentation or collective is known as the Modified Combined Obstacle Overlay, or the MACU. This overlay combines the entire staff effort into a single product that can easily be added to other staff section estimates and as a rapid reference guide for the intelligence section. The terrain effects matrix is built off the MACU and serves as an expanded descriptor of the AO. The matrix approaches analysis of OCOC mission military aspects of terrain describing the effects on military operations, military classification routes and bridges, and expected movement timelines by warfighting function. Appendix B of ATP 2-01.3 has tool templates that can assist in terrain calculations associated with rates of movements of march. If time permits, there are four techniques for evaluation of terrain for this step. Type 1. Centric rings. Starting at your unit's location and working outward based on initial evaluation of the terrain in step 1, you collect information inside your initial ring to answer questions and conduct the OACOC review and then proceed out further. Type 2, belt. You divide your AO into areas running the width of the AO and shaped by your METTC analysis. This method is effective if you are looking at terrain between clear features or obstacles, say a ridge line or a set of ripple, uh, rivers, for example. Type 3, avenue and depth. Analysis focus on identified avenues of approach with supported mobility quarters within each and should be considered in the conduct of primarily offensive operations. Type 4, box. Detailed analysis on critical areas. For example, potential engagement areas, objectives, gap crossing sites, landing zones, and so forth. Next is weather. Traditionally, weather data is provided from a higher headquarters as there's limited meteorological support in Tactical Army Headquarters. This subset does provide the weather forecast and length of the operation, climatology report, light data, and illumination charts, and then a weather effects matrix, which is a guide on capabilities of equipment and men for operation planning. ATP 2.01.3, Appendix B, Table Bravo 12, 
serves as an environmental mission uh, limiting threshold. Last is civil considerations continued. An A scope analysis of the AO is the last part of this step. Now there's no right or wrong answer on the conduct of this last step of two. Uh, however, you should reference your unit's uh, mission command SOP for a preferred criteria already outlined by your commander. Some units will crosswalk A scope with operational variables of Permisi or Permisi PT. Uh, others conduct the terrain analysis techniques only under the A scope construct, but ultimately it depends on the mission levied against your unit, the needs of your commander. At a minimum, the staff should analyze the AO through the A scope construct to build understanding of civil considerations and their impact on military operations. The final outputs for civil considerations should be an A scope analysis or matrix supporting civil considerations in an overlay. Efforts and competence demonstrated in step two will pay dividends throughout MDMP. When you enter later portions of MDMP, this early work enables accurate wargaming and builds on a true understanding of the OE. Visit the Army Publishing Directorate website for a complete listing of active Army publications and see Chapter 4 of ATP 2-01.3, Intelligence Preparation of the Battlefield, for a more in-depth review of Step 2 and the IPB process.